Hi everyone, I um, hope all is well. Um, my name is Tom Farron, I'm a tech writer at Cointelegraph and usually you can find me writing articles over on the website but today I'm on the YouTube channel. I'm going to be chatting with uh, Juventus and Italian national footballer Federico Chiesa and the founder of Hoffa Gallery and NFT platform uh, Elio Di Anna about the launch of the creation platform and uh, Chiesa's inaugural NFT collection. Federico, I wanted to come to you first. Um, congratulations on the successes in the in the in the summer for the for the Euro European competition. Um, how does it feel like reflecting on the past six months of that success? How does it feel to be a winner of that competition? It's a pleasure to me uh, to be here to be interviewed by you by Coin Telegraph. It's just amazing, and uh, you know, uh, creating your, this new collaboration with the Elio with this with the offline creation, it's just great. And I mean, uh, the whole point of the collaboration of these artworks is on the European Championship. It was, you know, just amazing to win such an important um, tournament for your, for your country, you know. And I think I still need some time to realize what actually I've achieved during the summer. So it was just, you know, uh, an unbelievable moment uh, you know it, it's difficult to be you know to have it again in the future because it, it was just something that you know uh, incredible just incredible uh, a lot of people said that you're one of the, the best players of the tournament so congratulations <laughs> thank you uh, <laughs> thank you so I know you're, you're, you're an advocate of the NFT space you've, you've got a keen interest in the space um, I know you've got a few NFTs yourself from the Hoffa collection um, from some of their recent exhibitions and so what kind of what aspect of NFTs really interest you is it like the, the art side the technology is it the the potential for growth the thing that you know uh, uh, got me the most about you know this uh, project with the uh, Elio and his and now an uh, off and creation you know about this you know creating my new NFT was the, just the art side of it because mm. you know when I was a big fan when I when you know when I was traveling with my family in foreign countries, you know, we, we used mm. to go and, you know, see museums of, you know, art paintings and everything. So it was just amazing. And then having the chance to create uh, in this mod modern era, my, my painting, my virtual painting was just mm. amazing. Just amazing. You know, the idea of uh, creating something like an artwork, actually, uh, an actual artwork, you know, and uh, even if it's digitalized, but it was just great. What kind of a story are you trying to encapsulate within that? What, what story are you trying to tell with that artwork? No, as I mentioned before, in this in this uh, artworks, we, we we were trying to get uh, the most uh, of out of the of what I've experienced uh, throughout the the championship, throughout mm. the tournament, and my emotions, and uh, especially the, the the one of the uh, NFTs, you know, one of this artwork. Uh, it was about my celebration after I scored the goal against uh, Austria. And we just tried to, you know, uh, replicate the, the, the emotion, the feelings uh, on, you know, on this uh, artwork. That's, that's really good. Um, and what's like the ambition for the, for, the, for the NFT? What's the goal from your perspective? No, my goal was to give something to my fans. You know, uh, after the Euro, of course, I had, uh, you know, a massive you know, increase on followers on Instagram and everything. So I wanted to give something back to my fans uh, to have. And, you know, on the 29th of, the, of December, everything is dropping. So... I'm hoping for the best, you know. That's great, yeah. Uh, good luck with that as well. Uh, Elio, I'm going to come to you now. Um, I know that Hoffa Gallery has a, quite an established history with uh, cryptocurrencies. I know um, when I visited the the gallery, um, I researched a lot about it, and you've been since 2018, you've been engaging in that space. Uh, what kind of inspired you to collaborate with uh, Federico on this initiative? We were, first of all, so blessed to 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 be able to collaborate with someone of the caliber of Federico. It, it was, uh, we were, you know, for a long time thinking, you know, let's go and propose this. And, and, you know, and when it just took a second, Federico was like, are you really asking me to make my own NFT? I was like, yeah, that's right. He was like, I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was my pleasure. And it was my pleasure. It took about two seconds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was done. Then it was like, okay, we can talk about something else then. <laughs> so um, apparently he had some good friends that, that were kind of pushing him. Oh, you know, you should really do that. I think 
I think we're living in a very particular moment in, in history. And I think it's a really, it's all about the timing and it's about finding that, that person that can represent that moment in history. And I think Federico mm. Chiesa was the perfect, uh, you know, the best possible candidate we could ever wish for when it came to, to doing our first ever non non strictly fine art nft so it's the mm. first time we actually collaborated in making an nft for someone that's in the sport industry and entertainer and so on so we with this new platform creation the whole concept is that i think the only aspect that's pushing people away from acquiring nfts is obviously these very high gas fees that are in ethereum mm. so what we've done with the creation platform is that it's built on solana for the end user you don't really um, feel the difference because all you're doing is you're getting a, a phantom wallet instead of a MetaMask wallet. Mm. But effectively, the the purchasing experience is the same, but it costs a fraction. You buy an NFT for one dollar, and that's amazing because sometimes and then you can buy a collectible NFT like this one. But in some cases, people were trying to buy something, and I think the prices were becoming astronomical in in, yeah. in so yeah. many aspects, and they're kind of scaring people away. And I think. This is not about doing something that is only for a very high end collector and a very you know top of top of the pyramid sort of sort of mm. buyer. We wanted this to be, as Federico said, uh, something for the fans, something for everyone. Of course, there's an auction, uh, which we you know we don't know where it, it could potentially uh, reach, but there is also an addition of 2,500 of, of an NFT, which will give, you know, effectively uh, two and a half thousand people the opportunity to, to own an original work by Federico Chiesa. So I saw a little bit about um, in the future, you're going to work with more sports people and also entertainment. I'm not going to ask for names specifically, um, but is that, is that, are you going to go down a similar route with that, with the Solana, as opposed to Ethereum, just because of the, the, the high entry fees? Our Hoffa.io platform is built on Ethereum, is already out there mm. on beta since, as you know, since um, quite a few months now. But uh, that will focus uh, strictly on, you know, fine art artists uh, that have, you know, a, a background in, you know, being exhibited through galleries. So we're, we're keeping a mm. very curated, more high end approach but with creation we really wanted to do something slightly more open something that can embrace also entertainment sports music uh, also you know some gaming uh, aspects so we wanted something perhaps also perhaps for a younger generation maybe uh, but definitely more accessible and in order to make something accessible solana was the best solution for us and um, yeah, we, we worked hard in, in making this platform. Federico, coming back to you now, you might be aware that Juventus partnered with um, Sokios.com uh, in 2018 to uh, release a fan token. And we've heard a lot about how this affects, how this affects like, uh, from the fan side and how fans are becoming quite um, receptive to these new initiatives. Um, as a player, like, how does that impact you and, and what's your perspective on that? As uh, Elio mentioned, we're, we're living in a moment that we need to, you know, uh, make people understand the, the, the possibilities that come with the NFT and all these, you know, plat platforms that you mentioned, you know, and it's just great. It, it, think, uh, it sounds like something in the far future, but it's just happening right now. I think the, the whole thing about this is uh, making them connecting even more to you, to the to the club, the emotion side of things, you know, it's all about emotion, you know, football. So yeah. I mean, uh, having you know, this interaction, you know, even if it's uh, digitalized, uh, it's great. I agree with that. Yeah, totally. Um, Elion, coming back to you now, um, what's your like expectations for this going into 2022? Do you think we will see that mainstream adoption that a lot of people talk about? I think so. I think 2022 would be an absolutely defining uh, year. Uh, we'll see a lot of mainstream adoption mm. uh, in the NFT and tokenization space. Yeah. Um, and do you think like specifically NFTs or, or just the wider crypto space? Any? I think I think the wider crypto space. I think uh, what hasn't been explored yet on a on a major scale is obviously tokenization uh, with with you know something being owned owned mm. by a multitude of people so basically a crowd ownership of something mm. uh, which means you know things can be funded 
by by you know the the general public and and you mm. know this can be done all via blockchain i think it's amazing because i mean i remember some story there's a pub in london that was going to get closed shut down and all the locals loved it so they all decided to put some money all together and they kept this pub going mm. and i think like that's a perfect example of something that you know there could be a business that's just not able to survive but they have a beautiful business model and maybe it's something that's really worth keeping and they can just reach out and via the technology they can get funding and everyone can benefit um, from this directly through the blockchain with you know transparency of ownership and and so I think there are many examples of of uh, real world use where um, the both NFT and in general the tokenization models uh, can can become very interesting for for the real world yeah uh, yeah i agree with that yeah definitely um uh, no, federico we hope you get get back to fitness uh as soon as possible thank you for your time it was just a pleasure having this interview with you and uh yeah i'm coming back great to hear great <laughs> to hear <laughs> okay thanks a lot guys uh, appreciate that thank you so much.